Hey there, Valiant here. I wanted to make this video today to help anyone who might be struggling with low FPS in VR, specifically in VR chat. VR chat, even though not really having the best graphics, can be extremely demanding for your GPU to run. Just because you can run AAA games on your desktop doesn't necessarily mean that you can run VR chat at its fullest. There's a lot of reasons for this, and I'll get into some of them shortly. However, unlike playing a game on your desktop, VR requires you to essentially be running the game three times, once for your left eye, once for your right eye, and once on your desktop. This means that even the beefiest PCs can struggle running this application at a serviceable frame rate. For context, my PC is running a 4070 graphics card with a Ryzen 9 5950X processor, both of which are considered to be pretty high-end PC parts. However, I still struggle to even get a manageable frame rate in VR chat depending on multiple factors. I spent over 5,000 hours in VR, specifically in VR chat, and I've gotten some great insight from people I know that I want to share with you today. So before I show you how to increase your FPS in VR chat, let's first talk about a few reasons why VR chat is so demanding. Number one, rendering. Like I've said before, when running VR chat, you're essentially running three games at the same time. Most VR games are optimized for this. However, since VR chat is primarily driven by player created content, a lot of that content tends to not be optimized. Most VR creators create stuff in VR on their desktop, which runs infinitely better than if you were to run it with a VR headset. That's essentially why if you've ever played VR chat, you'll go to some worlds which run absolutely awesome and look great while others look like absolute dog shit and run worse than City Skylines 2 on launch. Number two, VRAM. Again, since people are allowed to make their own content in VR chat, which typically all use 4K textures or higher, your GPU is going to have to have a lot of VRAM in order to cache all of these textures. Some online sources will say you need as little as 4 gigs of VRAM to run VR chat. However, the minimum I would personally recommend would be around 8 gigs of VRAM and at least 12 gigabytes of VRAM if you're really serious about playing VR chat. Anything more than this is just the icing on the cake. Having less than 8 gigabytes of VRAM means Means you're going to encounter issues when caching textures for more than four or five avatars in the same world. You can mitigate this specific issue by blocking people's avatars in the VR chat shield menu settings, which we'll talk about a bit later. Number three, your VR headset. This will set the upper limit to what is visually acceptable within your headset itself. Programs like Steam VR will allow you to change how this data is interpreted by your headset, thus allowing you to save some frames. This also means that if you're running an extremely powerful headset like a Vario Aero or a Pimax 8K, this is going to be an extremely, extremely demanding set of images to run inside of the headset at a low response time. If you're unaware, the lower the response time in your headset, the better, smoother, and more responsive the image is going to be that you're viewing. Also, rendering these massive images on your headset once again three times is going to have an absolutely crazy impact on your GPU, no matter how strong your PC is. Now that we know a little bit more about why VR chat is so demanding on your PC, let's take a look at a ton of different ways that you can possibly increase your FPS in VR chat and give you a better experience. I'm going to give a, a bit of a disclaimer here and say that if you're running an older PC or even a laptop with like an integrated graphics card or even like a 970 or something, there's a good chance that none of these tips are actually actually going to help. In that case, your best bet is to either just upgrade your rig or your PC or switch to a headset that's capable of running VR chat natively like the Quest 2 or the Quest 3. Let's start off with the actual options present in VR chat. Most VR chat players will probably already know that the VR chat program offers you little to no graphics tweaking options to help out your performance. Thus, the only real thing you can do here will be to open up your big menu in VR chat and head over to the settings tab. From here, scroll down on the left wing to graphics and set the overall graphics quality to low. I would personally recommend also setting the anti-aliasing options to zero here as well. It's going to look a little bit more choppy in your headset, but trust me, the amount of demand that this takes off of your graphics card is uh, nothing to scoff at. All these options are essentially Unity VR options, uh, and they're built into the game itself. As for the specific world you're in, be sure to check when you enter a world in VR chat if there's any options to maybe remove certain aspects, turn off post processing or anything like that. Once again, these are all Unity options that can be turned off, which will have a dramatic impact on your performance in that specific world. Not all worlds have these options, but it's something to keep an eye out. While we're here, let's head over and set up our shield settings. These can be found in the big VR chat menu at the bottom wing with the little shield icon. I'm going to advise that you set a completely custom shield level for this. You'll want to block all avatar shaders, sounds, uh, everything from every single person 
except for your friends and you can even turn them off if you want and manually turn on everyone. I would say by default, you should only turn on voice, avatars and emojis, which is the first three options for your friends and have everyone else set to automatically be turned off. If someone comes up to you in a VR chat world and you want to remove their robot avatar that you see, you simply open your small menu, click on them and show avatar. This will show their avatar at your base levels, which means you won't see any of the crazy animations, part effects or anything that might lag you out. If you're like me and you enjoy visiting maxed out worlds with 80 plus people in them, this option will save your life and make it actually playable to where you can enter the world, hang out with your friends and not be at 6 FPS. All right, next we need to check and set up our headset specific settings. I own both an Index and a Quest Pro, so I'm going to show you how to set up the best options for both of these headsets. Let's start off with the Index, Valve's flagship peripheral and my personal recommendation for anyone who's looking to get into VR chat at any sort of level, especially VR gaming. Probably one of the most comfortable headsets you can buy. It's extremely versatile, robust, it's tough. Uh, and definitely worth the money. Plus, at any point, you can upgrade to full body tracking and everything you need for it is basically in the complete package for the index. The Steam VR menu, thankfully, gives us a bunch of options that we can use to try and get the best performance out of our VR games. First things first, while you have VR open, head into the VR graph, which is like this sm the small little window that pops up when you open Steam VR. You can head up at the top left, hit the hamburger menu and click settings. From the settings, make sure at the bottom left that you have advanced options or advanced advanced settings set to on. Under the video tab, we're going to go ahead and first remove advanced super sampling if you have this on. This option is extremely, extremely demanding. And if you've been running VR with this option on, turn it off and you will notice an instant increase in frame rate. Next, you're going to want to lower the Hertz on the headset. This is available at the top right. It's a small little bubble option that you can click. I would advise setting this as low as possible. Now, this is going to lower the perceived quality of your headset, uh, which means that everything is going to look a little more choppy, but the actual responsiveness and frame rate within your headset are going to definitely be increased, especially if you have this set to 120. Next stop is our visual scaling. Now, visual scaling is probably one of the most impactful options outside of removing advanced super sampling and lowering your hertz. You're going to want to set this as low as you're comfortable doing. Now, I probably don't immediately recommend setting it to 30, which is the lowest for the index headset, uh, because everything inside of your headset is going to look like the virtual boy. However, setting this as low as possible will extensively increase the performance and lower the demand on your GPU. If you're someone who experiences trouble running in VR, and no matter what world you're in, no matter what avatars you see, no matter what avatar you're using, I'd personally recommend and maybe just biting the bullet and setting this down to 30%. Next up is the Oculus. Remember, these options work the same for every Meta headset. First thing I would personally recommend doing is running Steam from within the Oculus dashboard. Now, there's a very specific reason for this. Most people will tell you to run Virtual Desktop, which is a fairly good program. However, there's something you can actually do that essentially removes both the Oculus dashboard as well as the need for having to use something like Virtual Desktop. You should look into a program called Oculus Killer. This program essentially removes the Oculus dashboard and loads you straight into Steam VR when using Airlink or Questlink. For whatever reason, Meta thought it was a good idea to make it so that the Oculus dashboard is always running in the background no matter what game you're playing, even if you're not using it, which means that it's constantly drawing GPU and constantly running basically a 3D space that it doesn't need to run. I put a link to Oculus Killer in the description of this video. I suggest checking out the GitHub and the installation instructions. It's incredibly easy, it takes like a minute to set up, and it's going to improve your graphics performance on VRChat through the Oculus headsets by a, a significant margin. Next, let's head into the Oculus device settings. You can access these under device, click on your device and take a look on the right hand menu and you'll see all the options that are available for your specific headset. You'll want to set your headset's internal resolution as low as possible. If you're running VR through Steam VR, you'll additionally be able to lower the resolution further through the Steam VR menu, like I mentioned before, which is something you can do afterwards. Unfortunately, again, this is going to lower the perceived quality of your headset. If that's something you just don't want to do, 
you'll have to keep it as high as possible. If you don't care and you just want to run a smooth experience, this is definitely the best way to do it. Also, like the Index headset, we're going to lower the hertz of the headset here to as low as possible. Depending on your specific headset, these options are different and you might not even have the option to lower this, but if you do, I'd suggest putting it as low as possible. Once you've got your headset specific options set up, there's still a couple of extra things that we can do to increase our graphics performance even higher and go even further beyond. Uh, one weird thing that I've done personally in the past, which has actually helped me uh, since I didn't have that great of a GPU, I had a 1650 Super, which was running uh, a splitter and I was essentially using three monitors with one in my integrated graphics. Uh, the idea behind this is that you want to remove one of your monitors and only leave your main monitor. This is especially impactful if you have a 4K monitor, uh, a widescreen curved monitor, these are demanding uh, on your GPU, even though it doesn't seem like it. Removing these before starting VR or after starting VR will essentially give you some free performance. If you're not comfortable with removing the monitor every time, you can also just lower the resolution of that specific monitor, your main one, from 4K, let's say, uh, down to 1080p, or even as far as 720p if you really want to get the best performance. This might seem stupid or like it won't do anything, but for people with uh, less strong graphics cards like I used to have, this can literally be the difference between having 60 FPS or having 30 FPS. Finally, I would advise checking your GPU's control panel. Now, there's different GPU control panels for each different type of GPU. Uh, however, I'd advise going in and maybe setting some FPS limits. You can also set VR scaling options, which a lot of new GPUs have in the control panel. All of these options can actually have a major impact on the performance within VR chat. For example, my overall settings on my GPU were set to have a max frame rate of 300 FPS. Now that's fine for standard gaming on your desktop. However, when you're trying to run 300 FPS on each image of your headset, uh, your GPU is going to essentially be working overtime and there's literally absolutely no way it's going to be able to run any of those frames. All this can be avoided by setting a game specific profile within your GPU's control panel. You can lower any settings you think might help with VR chat. Now I'm not going to go over GPU specific settings uh, because I only have a NVIDIA GPU uh, but there are guides out there to show you how to optimize those specific parts of your control panel. I'd advise going and checking out one of those videos. Uh, if I find a good one I'll link it in the uh, description below. Doing all of the things that I've spoke about in this video uh, even if you don't have the greatest PC should increase your in headset FPS by at least 20. One last thing you can do if you're still having trouble after following this guide is to find an avatar that has a green uh, performance rating. These avatars are typically highly optimized and you can find a lot of free ones within the VRChat avatar search uh, under public avatar. If you're still experiencing issues while playing VRChat after doing all the things in this guide, this is officially your sign that you probably need a better PC if you want to get the frame rate that you want out of your VR headset. Remember, even if your PC can run games on your desktop, pretty well or even on max settings, hell even on ultra settings, isn't a guarantee that you're going to be able to run VR chat at your desired frame rate. VR chat is a notoriously unoptimized game filled with large textures and unoptimized player driven content, meaning even in the best circumstances, you could still potentially have trouble running this program in a VR headset. Hopefully this guide helped you get the most frame rate out of your headset when playing VR chat. If you gained at least 10 FPS on your headset after watching this video, then please like and subscribe and share it with any of your friends who might also be having FPS issues in VR chat. Even if they already have a great PC, some of the tips here can actually help them get a more consistent frame rate, especially if they're a streamer or they like recording videos for YouTube or even TikTok. If you want to see more of my content, you can follow me on TikTok. I do make memes there. Uh, I also stream live on Twitch. So if you want to come by and watch me on Twitch and maybe ask some questions that I didn't answer here in this video, uh, you can do so through my Twitch links. Uh, all of those are in the description below. Uh, anyways, that's going to be it for this video. And I guess I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.